reaching towards your light. Chapter 12, use me for your passion and not for your ego. Socially, we, we lost the sense of shame and fault. Our individual culture now, right, is personal humbling through the social experience, right? We in a humbling experience. You, know, talk about, you talk about the Illuminati and humiliation routine. We're the Illuminati. We shame people and put them through a routine. Like all I, yo, all I do is I, I say, yo, these people don't care about you. But me, I got your back through and through, right? So you, you know, one thing that people feel passionate about seeing black men in skirts. It's a Hollywood ritual. It's inf- You don't respect him as a man to make the decision for himself. You criticizing Martin Lawrence about wearing a skirt? The man made the decision for himself. We don't respect the black man's choices. We think we know better than the black man in society. Illuminati say, yo, I got you no matter what. So we, 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 te- we test you socially. We see how the people respond to you and we show you, yo, you see, these people don't love you. They don't even know you. But all they do is see you negative, negatively. That's how social media, that's the cancel culture. Yo, that's where we at. We don't know shame anymore. The people who are progressing now socially, they understand shame. And yo, they say, fuck y'all. I'm doing me and my family. While the rest of us are still just enthralled in the passion of commenting and talking trash about other people, judging people. Sometimes you, you, you in the bullshit. You have to be. It's fun. It's fun to troll, right? But I'm not passionately behind arguing with you about a perspective. I don't have that much time and energy in my life. I'm too selfish. D7, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is coming out. It's the second series in the remake. And the dude commented, the original was mid. And I didn't know if he was talking about re, uh, remake, the, the first part of the remake, or the original one for PlayStation 1. I said, which one are you talking about? Like, for me, Final Fantasy VII was inspirational. It like changed my perspective on storytelling. It's what got me hooked into video games. I could be someone else who's a hero. Fuck my life. Right? Man, Mario's life is whack. <laughs> he can't protect his woman. <laughs> Right? Why she keep getting kidnapped? Mario can't protect his woman. Cloud Strife's out to save the world, right? Avalanche's out to save the world. Barrett, Tifa, Ares, they're out to save the world. And their individual causes, their people, their communities. That's a story I want to be a part of. It's not about me. It's, I'm leading, but I got a team with me. That's why I love Final Fantasy VII. That's what it introduced to me. It's narcissism, right? I want to be in charge. I know what's best. You do fire now. <laughs> I, I know the rules. I know how to beat this boss. I got, got it. Oh, man. And he said the original was mid. That's okay. In, in my mind, you know, I feel offended because when someone criticizes a piece of art that yo, you have connected with over the, over decades, you take it a little personal, right? Because it's like it's a personal attack on you and your perspective and your philosophy and how you view life. I said, yo, don't get emotionally involved. Don't argue. Don't say, nah, you wild and that shit. What do you like? Tell me about yourself. I said, yo, what was uh, what was your favorite PS1 game? And he said, Twisted Metal. I said, yo, for sure. For sure, for sure. And in that moment, I thought about my perspective on Wu-Tang Clan or why Wu-Tang Clan is the best rap group of all time. Wu-Tang Clan is like really the a crew where... I could be with five people and we can all have different opinions on who the best artist is. And I could agree with them. I could say, yo, for me, it's Raekwon. If someone said, met that man, I say, yeah, yeah, I see that, yo. Nigga, nice. <laughs> right, nigga, nice. <laughs> so, like, those early PlayStation games, right, for me, that, like, that was like a Wu-Tang Clan moment, right? My favorite game doesn't have to be your favorite game. But let's see if you choose, at least in the top five that I like. Twist the metal, yo, that was my shit. <laughs> that was my shit back in the day, right? Back when we had demos, right? Back when you had 20 game demos, man. That was life. Talk about addiction, right? We saw the social media companies. You better sue Sony and Nintendo and all of them.
Yo, I just reply. Like, I do the dead emoji. I might make a little statement here and there. But that's it. I have a little fun with it. But I see myself getting caught up. Caught up, right? It feel good. Like, one of my old posts, um, someone from the Senate went to Congress and something like that on a Capitol Hill. And they were saying that there's a fear of a Chinese cyber attack. And I wrote, the call is coming from inside the house. And I comment blew up a little bit. And then yesterday, because of the um, AT&T and whatever shortages, that post thought it booming again. And I'm seeing, man, yo, like over 200 likes. And that oxycontin, that feeling of importance. Ah, they like something I wrote. I'm that nigga for, for that bullshit, right? That social media bullshit. I see myself getting back in it, watching the numbers dissipate, right? You get your hit, right? That's like That's the hit. You get a thousand likes, or you you in you checking every five minutes. Who wrote something? Who can I reply to? Who can I engage with? Yeah, 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 all of that. And then it's twenty new likes. Then it's ten. And it's you're out of the limelight. Back to your life. What did you miss in between that whole time, right? How long, how 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 long were you pressing that button? How long you refreshing? How long you touching that screen trying to get a hit? We don't know shame anymore because we don't look at ourselves. We're looking at social media. We're listening to content. We're watching TV. we having bullshit-ass conversations. Ain't no growth. Only healing. Healing and growth aren't synonymous. Growth is just, I just have a new perspective that I didn't have yesterday. Sometimes that new perspective is bullshit. Respectfully, right? Sometimes your perspective on life, your philosophy is bullshit. You still going to live it, right? Because you, you don't know it. You, you, haven't, you haven't looked at your own light. Sometimes yo, that's all we got is those little hits, the drugs, the vices, the alcohol. I drink liquor for the first time since 2013 on Erica's birthday. Just looking through the catalog, and it's something I've been thinking about for a while. It's easy to be sober, but I want to be able to. It's easy to say no. It's easy to not do nothing, right? It's easy to do nothing. I'm never hitting a crack rock. Like that's it. That's a definitive. I'm okay. That's like I'm good on that. That's easy. Can I hit it once and say, "All right, this is cool," and not need to hit it a second, twice, third, fourth, fifth time every day? Sometimes I just need a, sometimes you need to exist with the natural high. So I look and I'm like, you know, we out, we celebrate her birthday. Let's go for it. Fuck it, right? I, I tell myself if I do drink, I want it to be a, an occasion, not just, you know, not the bullshit I was on. So I found something, I found a brand, I, a drink I like. It's a whiskey and I order it. He said, uh, neat, or whatever the other way is. I don't remember. I said, neat. You know what? Right? I don't need you to alter the taste. Give it to me raw. Give me the raw. Give me the real raw. So, yo, you know, I'm bouncing a little bit. The glass is on the table. He said, sit down. And Erica's looking at me like, can't believe it. <laughs> I don't know if it's concern. I don't know if it's uh, worry, excitement. I grab it, I, oh, man, I smell it, yo, I wave it, I stick my nose in the glass, I wave it around, yo, mm-mm, bitch, mm-mm, <laughs> yeah, mm-mm, yo, smell good, you feel those little particles just hitting the back of your throat for the first time in a while, you connect, yo, you, Relapse, right? You relapsing is just out. You living through the moment of the past of when it felt good. And sometimes the relapse is a fucking hour. Sometimes it's for the night. Sometimes it's for a week. Sometimes, yo, it's just for a blink. It's just like, ah, yeah, I remember it. I remember this shit, yo. I remember this shit. I set it down. We still talking, you know. We're still talking, listening to music, listening to like a live jazz band. I think it was jazz. I don't remember, man. I don't remember. I only remember myself. I'm a narcissist. I don't remember what I did, right? I only remember what I did. 
<laughs> oh man. Pick it up again. I wave it. I give it another set. And I think I said, yo, I could just order it and let it sit and just forget it. It's, you know, you ordered it, you took the first step, right? I sound with that thought for a bit. I'm like, that shit sound whack. That sounds stupid, right? Why are you going to order? You're going to waste money. You're going to waste a drink. Nah. Don't be, a, don't be scared, right? You scared of the drink, nigga? <laughs> you scared of the drink? Nah. Nah. Do another inhale and I, I sip. And I, let, I let it hit my palate and, yo, I self define in that moment. How does it feel? It burns, right? The sensation burns a little bit. It feels familiar. I flash back to those intense nights where you when you reek of liquor and you know it, right? There's sometimes you smell like liquor and only other people know it. You're not aware of it. But sometimes it's so bad you smell it on yourself, right? And in that moment, I smelt it on myself. It was all right. Put it down. Talk for a little bit. Drink some water, some sparkling water to cleanse my palate a little bit. Yo, I take another sip. And... Life just settles in, right? Life settles in. And sometimes I say, we're innately geared toward negativity. Like your, your comfort, your, 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 when you switch into that next phase of comfort or discomfort, right? Sometimes it's negativity. And, you know, I felt tired about life, yo. I was just like, yo, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I'm socially tired. Spiritually, I feel myself getting there, but I know I have vacation next week, which is this week, and the thought just kind of transitioned. Right? I f- like I, f- I felt the funk. I felt the funk. Sometimes I say I talk about the funk being in the funk. In the past, it, if the, being in the funk for more than a month is depression. It might be two. You know, th- they say twenty-one days is a month of depression or two years, three years, and the goal is to gradually pull that funk back and so it happens less and less and less. I can deal with all. Right now, I can deal with a week of funk, but most I mostly have been in more control of my life through being f- defining it. Like, like funk is my language and the word that I use to define where I don't feel too excited about tomorrow and tomorrow in the long run. And once I define it, it's like, all right, okay, this, is, this isn't who you are. What do you need to feel better? Sometimes it's just a new thought, new idea. So some, I just need one new idea a day and it feels productive. It feels, it gives me hope. That's all creating content is, right? Content, creating original content is this is my glimpse of hope <laughs> for myself and to society. I hope that this has value to someone. I hope it has value to myself. And seeing people re- inter- interact with it on a positive level, that's your hope to keep moving forward. So I define the funk. I say, damn. And I think about, yo, tomorrow's going to be better. And the funk naturally dissipates. At the bar, after drinking the, after taking my second sip, the funk kicked in. The funk synced in, rather. And when I cleansed my palate, I got rid of the the flavor, the taste, the scent of alcohol momentarily. I felt refreshed. It's not who I am. And I transitioned into an ice cube. At one drop, how I. You let the water molecules just dissipate into the liquid. Cause yo, you cause a little, cause a little bit of molecular chaos in that glass, yo, and it thins the liquor out. So you sip it; it's not as hard, it's not as ripe, it's faint. The scent is fading away. The natural, the natural destructive and cleansing power of water dissipates some of those molecules. So the stench, the experience isn't as stagnant as rigid. And I stir the ice cube around and I keep this naturally thinning out the flavor of the liquor until it's gone. 
I drink my sparkling water. I cleanse my palate. I still feel after effects. Like mentally, I I'm a I, mentally I feel off. So I'm a, I've been drinking, right? I know I've been drinking. I'm walking back to the Airbnb, and I'm just taking in the present, the awareness of light. How does how does light? How does this feel, right? You're not drunk, but how does it feel to have drink, be aware of it, and it's be out and about and more slower? Like liquor make you slow. And I ain't like it. I go out and smoke. I'm yo. I got eyes everywhere. <laughs> I got it naturally. <laughs> um but yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it make you feel in the moment? And Bringing your truth from the drink, from the vice. Bringing your truth from the vice. And sometimes that's shame, right? The funk, the low of life is facing your yourself and shame. Like looking at the future of the path that you're creating and being ashamed of yourself. Like, nah, that's not who I am. That's not what I want for myself. And yo, resp- individual responsibility. I, what I got to do to not be that? <laughs> what I got to do? And sometimes just honoring yourself. But how much of your honor and how much of your light do you put through? Which part of ourselves do we hide from society? Which part of ourselves do we just wholeheartedly show and say, fuck it, yo, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do in my life. That's artistry, right? Fuck with everyone say, I'm going to write this music. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to color my hair. I got pronouns. I'm going to transition. I like they, them, all, yo, yo, you free to be whatever you want nowadays. But there's still a level of self that always doesn't need to be shared socially. And how do you decide to draw the line on that? You got, you got to shit. You got to do something. You got to do something. You got to share something. You can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. Had a good conversation with one of my. My boys, yo, someone I know from Twitter since 2014, 13, we became cool. <laughs> I was just, I, I didn't know what Twitter was about. I was, I was like an old confused person. I was used to chat rooms where you were in this confined space and you had a uh, structured dialogue. Right? I used to structure it. Twitter was just like the open world, right? You just talk about whatever you want. I started talking about snack cake. I started, I was on zebra cake. <laughs> I, was, I was in love with zebra cakes at that point in time. And I just kept talking about zebra cakes and snacks. <laughs> and, yo, know, I think he he was talking about zebra cakes too. And, yo, know, we just <laughs> followed each other. Yo, and then, like, that's how I got my, my in into Twitter. That was, like, my first, for me, that was my first Twitter community. We're talking about losing faith in the progress of the black experience and uh you know the initial idea is just seeing people being constantly run down you know, killer mike something he talked about however many years ago you know he went to public school he told little black boy black little black boy said he want to be president killer mike said nah that's not realistic you owe your parents of, of great service learn a trades little white boys I'm going to build up, I'm going to create a magic potion, I'm going to go to the moon and kill him. Like, yo, giving him props. My thought was, you know, d- dude just won the Grammy, right? Regardless if you like his music or not, yo, he's a black man who held it down for the black experience. You should be happy about that, right? Nah, right? Nah. You, you hating on him. He, he got arrested for alleged assault. Now, someone goes in the past, they, you know, some, someone goes to the algorithm, give me a time, Killer Mike says something controversial, right? The algorithm pulls it up, and now you just spread it on Twitter, right? So now you have this greater awareness of this black man belittled a young black boy. He ruined his hopes and dreams, right? There was a look of disappointment in the black boy's face when Killer Mike said that, but... You know, we define his experience. We say, we say you ruin his hopes and dreams. We don't believe in that little black boy anymore. Right? Someone told him no. So in our minds, the black boy is going to accept it. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they said I couldn't, so I'm not. Nah, right? We don't believe in black men. We don't believe in little black boys. 
right? I could be, I could look disappointed in the moment. That's just how I feel. But the social response placed too much value on how we feel in the moment. In the moment, I feel hurt that he said that, but yo, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna think about what he said. I'm gonna say, yo, fuck that nigga. I I don't even know who. I don't even. I don't even know him, right? I don't know him, and I'm gonna work toward being whatever I want to be. Every week in black news is someone new to dislike, someone new to hate, and I know it's my curated experience. I listen to the Star Report. I fought my algorithm on TikTok, shows me black news. It knows I like the bullshit. I, I, I need to be aware of what's going on in the black experience. But it's always the social response to the black experience that throws me off and causes me to worry. In the moment, we're going off back and forth like, yo, like, wow, we do, blah, 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 you know, all of that. And separating from, like, connecting on that realization gave me time to think and be like, okay, it's, you know, it's relative, right? Because there are other black people who have moved on and who still do what they need to do. But also, how do I define what I need to do? Are we, you know, collaborating on, an, on, on, a, on a business idea? And in my mind, I'm like, Yo, I wanna, how do we incorporate more black people? And everything I do moving forward, how do we incorporate more black people? How do we make it positive? How do we make it enriching? How do we bring light to it? Like, that's... That's all I care about, right? That's all I care about. And that's the next step of the funk, right? In the moment, the funk is, yeah, we crabs in the barrel, man. Right? And I'm at the bottom watching you pull the other person down. Instead of being up top, pushing you away, or trying to get out and kick you off, or trying to get out and trying to grab other people, right? Why, why one crab, why the crab? Don't ever lift the next man up, right? <laughs> Why the crowd don't ever lift the next man up? The light is solely for your passion. Whatever you share, yo, whatever you're willing to share, make sure it's good hearted, man. Make sure it's pure. Make sure it's authentic. What's the word? What's the R word? Um, righteous. Patrice O'Neill, make sure it's righteous. That's all I got. Peace.